hello hello and welcome to my channel my name is Kat I am the nurse flipper if this is your first time here welcome I wanted to go over in this video some items that you might not think about when you're doing your taxes and if you don't think that your sales on eBay are taxable, I will tell you legally they all are. So I want to go over some stuff that you can use to write off and counteract that stuff to decrease your taxable income from eBay. So let's take a look. All right, guys, so I have been getting some emails, some messages, and I want to first say, of course, I am not a tax professional and I do pay an accountant. And I think that for me, that is a wise decision. If you are good at bookkeeping and you're knowledgeable in taxes, then you might be able to do it yourself. I personally hired an accountant when I started seeing about $2,000 in sales a month and I do pay him $175. A lot of the work that he does for me is my state sales tax and that is because Florida sales tax is not collected by eBay so if you're one of the lucky ones in one of the states that eBay collects your sales tax then be thankful so when you get a resale certificate which means you don't pay taxes on stuff you purchase and I'll tell you I don't the flea market typically is not going to charge you tax anyways but i believe there's a way at goodwill that you can use a resale certificate i do not do that i just pay the sales tax however when you get this resale certificate that is required by some wholesale places that means you are required to report your sales to the state and if those sales are not sales that are collected the tax isn't collected by ebay then you have to report that in Florida unfortunately we have to report county by county so there are hundreds of counties in Florida and we have to go not we <laughs> I pay the accountant to do that but he has to go through all of our Florida sales break them down by county and each county in Florida has a different sales tax rate so I just charge a flat rate for Florida and I pay the extra which like Miami and the Florida Keys I want to say is 12 to 13 percent and I only charge seven percent which is what it is in my county and so that extra five or six percent comes out of my pocket so when you get a resale certificate that then makes you liable to report your sales even if eBay is collecting all the sales tax you would need to report zero for sales that need tax collected so you can't just get the resale certificate and then no extra paperwork is required you are then required to report your sales for sales tax and I will tell you from experience when I had a plant nursery probably 15 years ago that if you have no sales you still have to report that you have to send them a form with zero sales or they charge you a $50 late fee for zero tax owed so that's just a little tip so people want to know are eBay sales reportable as income? The answer to that is yes. But what if I don't get a 1099? It doesn't matter. Every source of income that you have legally should be reported on your tax return. And that's where a lot of people get confused and say, well, I don't get a 1099. Well, I know people that did not get 1099s were audited and ended up having to pay tax plus interest on eBay sales. That is people that did not have enough to get that 1099. So do not think you are safe or that you can hide it because there are chances that you will get caught. And I don't want to be that person that gets caught. I, of course, make enough sales that I do get the 1099 from PayPal and now eBay that I'm on managed payments. So we have those amounts that we are required to report, but you also are required if you're selling on Facebook and Mercari and Poshmark, but your taxable income is your profit. So that's the bottom line. So what I wanted to talk about is what can you do to lessen your tax 
liability for your eBay sales. And I will tell you now that we have filed for a loss the last two years because essentially we have reinvested everything back into the business showing a net zero profit or a loss. And some of the things that you should keep track of and you want to write off. And once again, I would recommend getting an accountant unless you're very knowledgeable in taxes is like this area behind me is a portion of my house that I use for my reselling business. And by federal law, you are allowed to claim a portion of your home as a home office. And I want to say it's between 20 and 30% you're allowed to claim. And we go over um, the max allowed to claim because we have our spare bedroom, this room, also my laundry room is full of inventory. So we claim the max on like household office space and you also have to think about things that you are doing or using that are for your reselling business number one i would have a separate bank account i would not recommend mixing it into your personal because it is much easier to keep track of if it is in a separate bank account and that makes it a lot easier to kind of see what you are doing and also to figure out what your profit is. So get a business account and keep track of your mileage. So mileage, you can either claim gas or mileage, not both. And nine times out of 10, your mileage is going to be the better bet. I want to say it was 58% last, 58%, 58 cents last year on the mile that you drive. Well, as most of you know, I live in the middle of nowhere, so I drive a lot. So there is an app I use called Mile IQ that tracks your phone. So whenever I'm leaving and then you can put, is this a business drive or is this a personal drive? So keep track of your mileage. If you want to go old school and write it down, whatever you need to do, keep track of that because that is something that will offset that money that you are making as well as what you're buying for your business. So if you need a new computer for your eBay listings or a new camera, for me, I use my cell phone and I did upgrade specifically for YouTube and for my eBay business. And I bought that out of my business account because my phone is used probably 95% for business. And that's something that is a write off as well is my phone bill, a portion of that is used for business and also like we have to pay for our trash to be taken out well percent of that trash you can <laughs> i have to push back back there with the label little peel off things but trash pickup a portion of that is my business trash and so i write a portion of that off and then of course all of your purchases so when you go to goodwill or you go to salvation army or you buy online on a high bid or a local estate auction all of that are costs that offset. So that $10 item that you sell is not $10 in profit and you want to be able to offset that and show that when you file your taxes. So let's say that $10 item cost you $5. So that would automatically be gone and you'd have $5 worth of profit left, but then you spent gas to go to the store to pick that up. You also might have paid for a box and for shipping supplies and you can see where you kind of dwindle down what your liability is because your liability is your profit, not the total amount of sales. You do report the amount of sales, but you don't pay tax on the amount of sales. You pay tax on the amount of profit. And for us, like buying a shed. So on last year's tax, we bought a shed and now we just bought another one which will be here on Monday, by the way, but that is a tax write-off. So when I go get insulation for that shed and flooring for that shed, that's all a business expense because that is only for my reselling business. So I wouldn't go use my personal card to purchase supplies for this shed. And if you are going to say like a flea market or garage sales, you can ask them to write you a receipt if you want to keep receipts. I, and my accountant has allowed me to do this, I am not sure on like technicalities, but we pull out say $100 in cash for garage sales and I'll let him know, hey, we pulled this out to go to garage sales to purchase items and he marks that as an expense. I'm not sure, like I said, 
I'm not an accountant <laughs> at all and I do not know like the ins and outs of all of that. You also can write off a portion of your electricity. Like I'm using 30 to 40 percent of my house so I'm paying electric on this office. I'm paying electric to heat and cool my shed and my storage location and that's something else. So you, if you can afford it, I would find a good accountant because they are going to reduce your tax liability and that is very important. So what happens when you don't report that? Say you get audited, well they go see, oh hey, whoever had $10,000 in eBay sales last year and you didn't keep track. You don't have a business bank account showing that you spent $3,000 on purchasing these items and a thousand dollars on shipping supplies and I'm just pulling numbers out of my head here but what's going to happen then is the government's going to want you to pay taxes on ten thousand dollars because you didn't keep good records of what you were spending and what your business was costing and a lot of people try and get around it and as I said I personally know people who were audited that did not get 1099 and were found to have a tax liability that took them years to pay off. So don't, don't be that person. And you might have to scrounge to get last year's stuff, but make sure it's only January right now. I'm not sure when you will be watching this video, but if you're not keeping track, start. You know, if you're not doing it, you have to start at some point. Get that separate business account. Get a business debit card. Yeah. Buy your shipping <clears throat> supplies from that business account buy your printer labels from that business account whatever you need for your business and i'm trying to think if there are any other things and if you guys have things that are business expenses that i might not be thinking of right now definitely drop those below in the comments just so we can kind of bounce off of each other what might be needed so another thing is and um, i don't use very many but if you're selling like say you're selling shoes and you have to buy cleaning supplies and um, like the little buffer thing. I, I don't clean shoes. Um, but that, that would be an expense that you would want to purchase separately either if it's from Amazon or if it's at the store because you want to be able to show, hey, I'm using this for my business and not this milk that I'm buying with it. And when you do that you again are decreasing and decreasing how much and i have decreased it to zero two years in a row because i wanted to build it up and i have over a hundred thousand dollars in inventory listed i would probably say 10 to twenty thousand unlisted it might be more it might be less i am honestly not sure hopefully when the new shed comes on monday i can start organizing and figure that out but uh, that's what I've done the last two years is build this up. So this year is going to be about pulling that money out, paying myself, paying down my debt. The business now has debt because the business has the shed. And I am going to make a thousand dollar payment on the shed today before we even get it to start paying that down. So I guess that that's really my whole point in this video is just that you want to make sure you keep track of everything have separate accounts so that you know what is your business stuff what is your personal I don't have a separate cell phone because like I said my cell phone is 90% used for my business either this YouTube channel that you're watching now or my eBay business I use my cell phone to list I use my cell phone to photograph I use my cell phone to record myself and it's pretty much all business expense some people do get separate ones but I don't know that that's really a necessity but keep track of your mileage that's a big one for us and yeah if you guys and your cost of goods your cost of goods is always probably going to be your highest expense unless you're getting stuff for free but free does not mean free unless they are like dropping it at your door which would be lovely if people would do that but <laughs> reality is that people are probably not going to come drop free inventory at your door. If they do, then you are super lucky. <laughs> um, so free inventory, say you get free stuff off the side of the road. Well, guess what? You had to drive there to pick it up. So you have that mileage and you might've needed stuff to clean it up. So there is that. So I just want to kind of get into your head, like 
think of all the things that are really taking away from that profit and again reducing tax liability because you don't want to pay taxes on more than what you have to i'm not saying in any way to like lie or hide stuff but think of every expense that you possibly could so that that liability is decreased and therefore you are paying less in taxes if you have any questions and not specifically tax related because as i said i'm not an accountant but um maybe i could help maybe probably not so let us all know down in the comments what you write off and maybe there is some stuff that i'm forgetting and that i could be missing personally all of us should be thinking about this right now because it will soon be time to file our taxes and hopefully you don't have to pay a bunch of money i hope this was somewhat informative for you guys today again it's a friday i hope you guys have a wonderful weekend i might go to the flea market tomorrow and again monday the shed is coming i am going to put another video out on sunday i will see you then i do appreciate all of you watching and hanging out with me and i will see you on the next one